welcome to our Wax Resist Painting Workshop. Um, welcome and it's lovely to see you. So my name's Hannah from Flying Fish Studio and this is our second workshop of five as part of Future Endeavours. So I'll just run through the materials that we'll need as part of this um, Wax Resist Workshop. So we'll need some watercolour paper, We'll also need some watercolours. We'll want a pot of water. Some masking tape if you have it. A paintbrush, I've got a thicker one and a really thin one. Don't worry if you don't have the thin one. Hello, lovely to see that people are joining. Um, a ruler, again only if you have one. And that's it. If you just make sure that you wear clothes that you don't mind um, if they get a little bit of paint on and same with your work surface. Um, so yes, then we can get started. So we're going to start by taking some watercolour paper. And now if you don't have watercolour paper, this will work on normal paper. The only thing is um, it might go a little bit wrinkly, the paper, after it's dried. Whereas... The, this watercolour paper will stay nice and stiff. So if you've got watercolour paper, that's fantastic. The types of the designs that we can create today. So here's one of them. So this is where I drew with the wax and then painted over with watercolour. Just put it in a bit. Okay, so wax is hydrophobic. Um, which also means which means water fearing so it means that the um, it repels the water rather than absorbing it so when we paint on top of the wax rather than the paint going on top the wax repels the water okay and because we're using watercolors that means it repels the color as well oh I forgot to include of course we'll actually need our wax so um, you could use oil pastels because oil pastels are made up um, of oil, wax, and then the colour of pigment. So I've got white here. Other colours will work. Um, I think white's probably more effective in my opinion um, just because it leaves a blank space rather than a coloured space. And then I've also got just the remainder of a wax candle. So if you've got a wax candle that you can use, I'm going to use the bottom end just so I don't get the wick on it. So to create our design, like this one here, you can see that there's a really um, clear, clean border around the edge. I do this uh, with a lot of my paintings using masking tape. So if you have masking tape, you can get your piece of watercolour paper and then creating a border just by sticking masking tape down onto the edge of your paper. Do make sure that it's lined up so that you don't get a wonky bit. And also decide how big of a border you would like. Whether you'd like just a little one or a larger one. So wherever the masking tape is on the paper, if it's stuck down nice and hard, the watercolour won't reach it. So I'm okay sticking it down to my table because in the art studio I know it will be fine. But if you if you do it on like a kitchen table or something, you can always lay newspaper underneath as well. So just laying this down now. Do make sure you stick it down nice and firmly so that none of the water seeps underneath. Lovely to see that people are joining us. If you have any questions at all during this workshop, do just ask and I'll answer them on here. Or if you have any questions afterwards, um, you can comment on this video. Oh, you've got to be careful you don't do this with the masking tape. Um, you can comment on the video or you can contact me directly at um, Flying Fish Studio. Here we are. Oh 
unravel this curly, curly bit of sellotape. Okay. I wouldn't use normal tape for this just because it tends to rip the paper when you take it off. So once I've stuck it down, I'm then going to draw whatever pattern I'd like on here. So I'm going to use, um, I find that wax candles work better, but if you've got oil pastels, you can try these as well. The key thing really for me when I'm creating a picture using wax resist is have a um, picture in mind that you, it, you don't mind if it doesn't totally come out the way you want it. So if you're writing say um, a letter in wax or um, something that it really matters if a certain bit is missing, I would avoid that. Do a pattern that's more abstract or if you are doing letters like a big A or B, then just do it nice and bold. So on mine, oh, it's a choice what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do some trees on mine today. So this is an idea as well, where I did, this is almost like the Orla Keeley pattern. If anyone knows that um, designer, <laughs> I like her pattern, so I've just done that on there. But on here, I'm going to do some trees. The thing with white wax is you can't see where you put it. <laughs> so you're gonna have to um, test your memory. It might come out a little bit shiny, especially if you've not stuck it down and you can tilt the paper. If you tilt the paper in the light, then you'll be able to see where the wax is. And I'm going to press down nice and hard on my paper to do my trees. So you can experiment with whatever patterns you want. You could do zigzags, you could have a specific image in your head. You can draw freehand like I've just done now. Or if you want a straight line, I'm going to use a ruler for mine. If you use a ruler, it also means that you can go back and forth and make sure you've got a nice thick amount of wax. So I'm doing this, um, the trunks of my trees right now. I'm going to do really slim trees. So I'm just drawing with my wax, my wax candle. It's transferring onto the paper. Okay. I'm just going to smooth that. And then I'm just going to draw my branches now. This is just an idea for an, a design. You'll actually see my design once the watercolour has been applied. Thankfully, there's a lot of light in here, so I can just about see where I'm drawing. So I'm just drawing all of the branches along here. If you just want to test the little bit out first, see if you prefer like a wax candle or an oil pastel, then you could do that maybe on just a little bit of watercolour paper first so you avoid wasting it. So I'm just going to keep going with these branches. Oh, I can just about see that. So yeah, the wax, it won't mix with the water and what will happen is when we apply the watercolour, because the wax is hydrophobic, which means fear of water, so hydro meaning water and phobic meaning fear of, so because it's hydrophobic, it will just roll off the wax onto the paper rather than laying on top of the wax. So now I've done my design, I'm just going to get my paintbrush, my pot of water and my watercolours and what I'm going to do is just dip my paintbrush in some water and depending on what colours I want to do, so I might go for some dark blues at the top, maybe some um, pinks in the middle and then greens at the bottom. So make sure you've got plenty of water in your watercolours. It won't work with acrylic paint because acrylic paint will just lie on top of the wax because it's the water that the wax repels. Okay, 
If you've got a top as well, you can mix colours in here and that way you can get a little bit of colour from here, mix it in, and clean your paintbrush, add another colour and make a new colour. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a wash across here. I'm not going to keep going over it, you don't want to scrape the wax off or anything. I'm just going to do a light wash over the top. If I just allow this to zoom in, okay, you can see wherever I've applied the wax, the water colour just rolls off. I'm just going to add a bit more water, okay? So, there we go. I'm just going to continue going down. I want my um, watercolours to blend as well, so I'm starting with this blue. And then I'm going to go to another type of blue. And then I'm just going to blend upwards. Add a bit of red. So if I'm adding a bit of red, then it's going to go in a purpley colour. And blend that as well. You will get um, a few dots of colour um, still like on top of the wax. That's actually, I think, a really nice effect. So I'm just going over, I've gone onto my purple, I might not just I might just do some reds now, blending into the purple. Okay, so here we are so far. Okay. And then hopefully my water's clean enough for this. If you want um you can get a, a new bit of water, especially if you're doing like a yellow at the bottom, which I'm going to try and do. It's turned into a green because my water's blue. <laughs> anyway, green is the colour I said at the start I wanted, so that's okay. Okay, and then I'm just blending it upwards till I've got a picture that I like. Okay. So, now I've finished with my picture, and I'll just... Um, well, what I'll do is I'll peel this off. I would wait if I were you. Um, because the watercolour is still wet, um, don't peel this off now. Wait till the watercolour's dry. But just so you can see my design, I'm going to peel it off. Make sure when you are peeling your water, um, sorry, your masking tape off later, instead of pulling it towards, just pull it away, and that means that the paper is less likely to rip where your painting is. It's okay if little bits rip where the white border is, but you don't want any of your picture being taken away with it ripping. So I'm pulling away from the picture. So like I said, don't do this yet because um, your watercolour is best dried first. Although mine's actually got a particularly neat border, <laughs> which I'm quite happy with. If it has seeped under a little bit, it just means that you um, next time just stick your masking tape down a little bit firmer. Okay, so here's my wax resist um, very quick painting here. If you want to do any more detail, you can, but like I said, um, don't be disheartened if some of it doesn't come out. So this is our first one. And um, what we're going to do now is we've kind of drawn our design all of our design and then painted over the top for our first one what we're going to do next is um using the wax resist to create um the appearance of light and what i mean by that is i'm just going to turn this one into a card because i'm going to do balloons to show this so just turned it into a card and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of my wax and just create just a little almost semicircle. It'll become more clear once I show you um, the finished piece. So I'm just doing a little semicircle and pressing down hard again 
on my piece of watercolour paper. What I'm then doing is getting my paint, again making sure it's nice and watery, and then I'm going to draw um, like an oval circle type shape um, around it. So, just drawing a circle. So I'm creating a balloon right now. And that little bit of shine in the balloon where the light hits it, that's what we're creating using this wax, wax resist technique. So here, if you can see, I didn't actually leave that bit blank. This is the section here, that semicircle, is where the wax, I put the wax on, so it cre created a resist, and then the watercolour slid off. So you can use it to create that appearance of light. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to do the little tip of the balloon where you'd tie the knot with my thinner paintbrush. And then just do a really, really thin string coming down. So this is going to be for a birthday card, I think. But you can experiment too with other um, scenes even that um, use light. So for example, um, if you want to do like a seascape with the water and the light um, reflecting off it, it might be that you do lots of lines where you're doing the sea and then painting over it with blue and then you'll get um, those straight white lines where you've done the wax resist will look like um, the reflections on the water. So here's our first balloon. So I'm just going to do a couple more of those. And now you know kind of the effect that it creates. It might be a little bit easier for you now to follow along if you're doing it with me now. So again, I'm just going to do a little semicircle, which is going to be the edge of my balloon. I'm pressing down quite hard. I can just about see the wax on my paper. And then I'm going to do a purpley colour this time. I'm just going to add a bit of red to my blue that's already in here. Then I'm going to carefully create my balloon shape. Okay. Then I'm just going to use my thinner paintbrush to do the knot at the end again. If you don't have a thinner paintbrush, if you just use the very, very tip of your paintbrush. Okay, and there's the second. If you want one section darker than the other sections, then just add a little bit more of the watercolour paint. And then the last one, again, semicircle at the side. Press down nice and hard. And I'm going to do a green one, I think, for this one. So adding lots of watercolour to my palette. And then drawing the shape of the balloon. Drawing the knot and then joining all the balloons up. Okay, so that's just um, one idea of how you might like to use wax resist in order to create the appearance of light. And then there's the other idea which is drawing out your design and then painting over the top and wherever you've drawn your design because wax is hydrophobic, it means that the water um, will roll off and won't stick to it. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, do just let me know. And it's been lovely to have you with us today. Okay, thank you. Bye.